Good morning. My name is James Little from Mass Spec Interpretation Services, and I'm creating a course on data processing using Thermo Freestyle software with the NIST MSMS search for compound identifications. It can be a very powerful approach for using the new NIST 2023 software and its associated MSMS libraries. This particular video discusses the NIST search type demonstration of using the software. There's several different types of searches when you take it to the NIST search, and I'll just walk through some of them to give you an example of how they work. It'll be somewhat complicated, so if you really want to learn how to use it, I would suggest that you go for more information here in the bottom in my online advanced course for NIST MSMS on my website. Today, I'll be using the Uvenol 3000, which has a molecular weight 214 to demonstrate the software. And also, you'll find some useful information on my website and in the handout for this that shows the typical settings that one employs for the NIST 23 MS Search 3.0 tandem mode part of the software. And it also talks about the different searches, and there are also some details on how to set up the standard parameters for it. So let's go to freestyle now. If we go to freestyle, I've shown you how to get this window up to set up all the different windows in my preferred approach in one of my videos and how to get the mass spectrum, etc. So we'll start there with it already open. And I've extracted out the MS, MS in the positive and negative ion modes for the components. And as I stated before, it's very important that you have all the parameters set up, but also when you send the spectra to the NIST search, you shouldn't use an average. So there is an option to average the spectrum, but if you do that, you'll lose the significant figures that show up within the software here when they're transferred to the NIST search. So it's best just to click on it different places. I'm just clicking different places on the positive ion to see if the spectrum's pretty reproducible. So I'll just pick one spot by left clicking on the top to get the spectrum below. And so we have it shown here. And we'll have to select this box. So I click on the title bar for it. And that allows you to see the export to NIST box at the top here so you can send it to the NIST. And if the program's not already open, the NIST program's not already open, it will open it. But I've already got it open, so it'll go directly there and search. And it did the search. So let's look what type of search we did. If we go to the settings here, we did an MSMS -MS search that specifies the precursor. And where is the precursor? Well, it's brought in. If you look up here at the top right, it's brought in. It was 215.0701, which is the M plus H ion for the Uvenol. So it's going to use that information plus the accurate mass values and also, it'll use whatever values are specified here. I put it in a window of 10 part per million, which is plenty wide for Orbitrap type data. Uh, but I just, to be cautious, I just used a little wider window than you might could. So you could narrow that down some. Of course, I'm doing the search on the NIST libraries. So what did we get? Well, here's the unknown at the top that brought it in here. It shows some statistics on how many ions it searched and the different uh, fits it found. And then if you go down to the bottom, I'm going to left click here. At that point, you can step through the entries if you want to by using the up and down key, keypad on your, on your keyboard. So you don't have to click on it every different spectrum. So you can just, I'm just going up and down pretty quickly using the keyboard to jump to the next one. So let's look what we have here. Um, one thing you'll see it if we click on the first one, we do have something that kind of looks like Uvenol. Here's the best best hit in the bottom. It has a score of 803. And usually this suggests that you look at things by the score, but you can also go by the forward search like you normally would have in a NIST search, or you can look at uh, reverse search, which doesn't penalize things for extra ions in your spectrum not found in the uh, library. It also has a PSS, which is a new search they have. It doesn't penalize you there when there's a partial spectrum in the library when you have extra ions in your spectrum because sometimes depending on the energies you don't always get all the same ions. So you might you can always sort by any of these by clicking on them up and down. Uh, you can sort it by dot product, you can sort it by score, 
sort it by reverse search. There's more in my advanced course about such things, or you can do this partial score, but usually they say do it by score. So that's how I've got it sorted here. So let's look at the first one. I've left clicked on it and, and we're looking at the spectrum in the bottom. We have a butterfly plot in the middle that shows up and down for the comparison. You'll notice here that this is like the new one all here, but it has this T butyl group on. And the reason it does is because this is actually um, an MS third type spectrum. So it they took the M plus H plus the minus the C4H8 and took that ion for that it got for the 215 and fragmented it again. So it's essentially you can create other spectra by losing things from larger molecular weight compounds to give you an idea about what your compound, but this compound actually has a molecular weight of, they use the 215 ion, but it actually weighs 270. So that's useful, especially if there's not something in the library, but uh, could be a little confusing if you don't pay attention that this is an ion fragmented from a higher molecular weight ion to give the 215 to get its spectrum. And that's why it looks like uvenol. So let's look to the next one. Here, the next best hit is the uvenol. And if you go over to the data, you can see it has a precursor of 215 but it also has a molecular weight of 214. So that's actually what we're looking for. But again, you get useful information from these other uh, MS third type ions. There's, there's a bunch of them here. Here's another MS third where they start out with something that weighs 312 to give the 215 ion. And then NIST takes that 215 ion and fragments it again to put it into the database. And that's why it shows up as being this species here because it's lost this, but again, it has the central part of the molecule, but it does not have a molecular weight of 215. So you have to be a little cautious when you step through the things. The other thing you can do is you can go up here to this funnel, right up here, the green funnel up here, click on it, and you can use these to narrow down the search after the search. So usually keep this off when you do your search initially, but then you can sort it by using this filter. It doesn't do another search. It just uses the information or the results that it has in this bottom result tab, tab here or box, and it just limits them somehow. So you can say enable these. And then you could actually turn off or include these MS third spectrum. So if you do include them, they'll show up. But if you don't, they will not. And you can also select the polarity. You can select the type instrument if you want to, the type of ion, but we'll say, okay. And see now the one that went away from that MS third type ion, a heavier molecular weight species, that they took that fragment ion and fragmented again, it, they disappear. So you only have the ones that come directly from the ion, uh, from the species that they actually put into the instrument, not one that was a higher molecular weight that fragmented to the 215 that was fragmented once again, it's what they call the MS third. You got MS one, which is the first stage where you just get the ions that are present by the LCMS. And then you got the MS two, where you take those ions and fragment it. And MS three is where you take a fragment ion when they were doing the standards of the compounds and took an ion that really just rearranged to something and fragmented it again. That would be the MS third. So we turn that off. You still have a lot of hits you could step through, but you can see the matches fall off fairly quickly, so they're probably not uh, very interesting. It's still fairly complicated to look at because you have a bunch of these, don't you, uh, for the same species over and over again. Well, there's another way up here. You go up here, this little target, best matching only, looks like a little target, and click on it. And now all the duplicates that have the same CAS number go away, so that when you go to the second hit, I'm down here and I'm clicking, I'm gonna step through them, it goes to an isomer of it, but it's only got one for that isomer, the particular one that we know it is, because that's what I actually purchased to run as the standard to demonstrate the software. So when you're doing this and you go back and you do another search, you should probably turn these off because it could limit your search so much you won't find anything when you first come into the results. And I'll turn off the best matching also. So putting it back like it was, you could also go and just restore you can go and file and say restore configuration and restore our save file if you couldn't remember all the things that you had changed about it. So that's uh, that's the first type search. To go back, if you ever wanted to go back and get the spectrum again, we'll just go back. You can use this switch to caller, which is kind of handy. 
and it just switches us back to the program it came from. So I just want to show you how to go back. So let's, I'm just going back to the other one by saying export to NIST again. So I've clicked on the bar to highlight this. Be sure you do that because if you don't, you can't see these icons to export to NIST under the workspace processing up here. I'm going back again and it just did the search again. So that's one type of search. So a um, very useful search because it's very limited because it only targets ions by a selected mass, this precursor mass, and so it's very selective. But if it's not in the database, there's other types of searches one can do. So let's go up here and change. So we're going up to the options here again, where it says library search options, and we'll change to a different type. We're going here, and instead of doing this identity search with MSMS, where it does the precursor ion, and you'll also note it says in spectrum. Almost always when you're doing things within the freestyle and importing them, it will be in the spectrum. That means up here in the right corner, it brings in the precursor for significant figures. But if for some reason it didn't catch it, you can turn that off and you can specify what it is because you could bring it in manually from the software. But for the freestyle, it does a real good job. So I just leave that on, let it bring it in save you some time about typing in additional information. So now we're going to go to a high resolution, no pre precursor. So this is just pretty much a search of a pattern in, in, in the spectra to see if it matches. So it doesn't look, it doesn't specify what the precursor has to be. It just looks for the uh, spectrum pattern and see if it can find anything similar. So this might be useful if the exact compound's not in there. So we'll say, okay. And we'll do the search again. So I've got this, I went up to the top. This is our unknown. I'll say go. It'll redo the search with this new type search. All right, so let's go to the bottom. I selected the first. Now I can use my keypad to go up and down. You can see it did find something similar. It uh, has that alkyl chain on it again, where they, but again, uh, this is actually, this is the precursor is. 313. So they actually did this as MS2 type spectrum. So it tells you it's related to that class. You just have to figure out, be smart enough to figure out that it really doesn't have this chain on it by looking at the accurate mass values. So let's use the keypad to go down to the next one. It's another spectrum of that. Here's the one with the T butyl uh, group, which fragments to the 215. This would be it actually an MS. Third, if you look here, M plus H plus C4H8. So that's an MS third type spectrum. Again, it tells you the class. Now, the fourth one down is the compound that we actually know it is. So it's all there, but uh, you have to be careful when you're looking through the different things to decide what it means, especially when you don't do a specified precursor. So we have that. And again, we can apply our filters again. We can get rid of all the duplicates up here by clicking on best matching only. You see it cut down the number of things in the display. It didn't make them go away because it's already done the search. You can go back and forth, but I got rid of some of those. So now the first one's that one with the alkyl ether, and the next one's the butyl, and the next one's what we want. And the next one's a different isomer of something else. So we have that. We can also go up to the filter up here and filter the list that we have. Not do another search, just filter the list we have. And we can say enable filtering. It is positive ion. It is M plus H. We'll just say OK. But we're not going to include the MS third plus spectra if they happen to show up and say OK. So let's go look at our results now. Uh, this isn't an MS third because this is from a precursor of 313. So it didn't get rid of it. And so we have that. And then second one down is what we want because we know it weighs 214. So an M plus H at 215, it has the right molecular formula. So you see that's another type search one can do. So let's go back and make sure we don't limit our search. Once again, we're going to turn off the best matching only. We're going to turn off the filter because we want to switch to a different type search and we don't want to over filter before we look at the raw results. We'll come up to the top now and go to the library search options here. We're going to, going to change to a similarity type search. And, and these are called hybrid searches because it does both the forward search, but it also looks at all the fragments 
and compares all the fragments from your spectrum to the losses from the Laker ion and, and calculates a match factor for it also. So it's a hybrid score. It's a mixture of two scores. And that gets a little complicated and you'd really need to go take my advanced course if you want to learn how to use this. If, if you just want to use it and just learn some basics, I would normally only use these searches over here. Uh, you need to be a little bit more of an advanced user to use the similarity. So I'm turning on the MSMS hybrid. There's also a, one in EI here, but uh, we want the one for MSMS. And we'll say, OK, we'll once again go and do a search. So we've done the search now. And what do we find here? Uh, again, we have our unknown on the top, butterfly display, results in the bottom. But I'm going to the bottom pane. I left clicked on the first one, and I'm going to use my keypad arrows up and down on my keypad to go look through some of them. And what you'll see here is that this material, if you consider the fragments that are lost from the top and the standard pattern, it's very similar to something that has a delta mass of 14. You can see it has an extra methyl group on here. So essentially, if this hadn't been in the library, it would tell you that your unknown uh, is just very similar to this spectrum, but it differs by a methyl group, 14, and it actually shows it to accurate mass, you know, the molecular formula. You'll have another one like that for 14. 98 tells you that you've uh, lost this chain over here to get back to the 214. So it's telling you things that differ uh, by a delta mass, and you'll find somewhere in your table, as long as the 10th down is actually your species. So it, it finds things with higher fits than even what the exact spectrum is. And that could be bothersome in this case, but if it wasn't in the database, it'll tell you something that's different about your spectrum to those in the database and give you a big clue about what your spectrum of the unknown might be. Thus, it really expands the use or the power of your libraries by essentially creating more entries that can be searched. So that can be very powerful. And of course, you can filter those just like before. You can go up to best matching only, Got rid of some of the hits. You can go up to the filter and enable filtering. You could leave off the MS third spectra if we wanted or include them if we thought it would be useful. Still pause it and say, OK. You can see it cut down the number of entries a lot. But still, the first one is the delta mass here. 14 difference for the methyl. Uh, it's got the alkyl chain difference. It's got uh, a chlorine replacing uh, two hydroxy groups to give a delta mass of 1.9. And then the hit that we want is the fourth one down. So you can see um, this is a little bit more complicated, but it's more powerful too. I'm, I'm a real big fan of adaptive of hybrid searches, of hybrid searches by um, in NIST software. So it can be very, very powerful, uh, especially for drug analyses, illicit drug analyses, etc. So that kind of gave you an overview. You'll really have to go take the advanced course to get a better idea. But again, if you just want to use the basics, start out with something over here. The identity, either the one precursor is very specific, and the high resolution, no precursor gives you patterns. But I would probably start with the MSMS. OK, and make sure that your filter is not on when you first do the search and make sure the target doesn't get rid of duplicates. It's better just to leave it as the raw data and then just start filtering down to where you need to be. So I hope this has been useful to you. I know it's a pretty fast uh, familiarization of the software, but uh, I just wanted to give you an idea. Look at the handouts, uh, take the advanced course if you want to get to be a more power user of the software. But uh, overall, I hope this has been useful to you and have a good day.